What's up guys, it's LOF Nakat and I have MS Okami with me. Today we are here to talk about Pikachu. This is a how to play Pikachu guide. So to kick right into it, let's start with the pros. Now Pikachu isn't a character that's necessarily easy to hit. Certain moves allows Pikachu's, I'd say, hurt boxes to shrink, making it a lot harder to hit Pikachu. Say I land with a back air to the stage, if my opponent tries to grab me, they'll miss the grab and I'll be able to punish them for that. Pikachu's speed is very fast, a very fast character. Not only is his ground speed fast, but he can move across the stage with quick attack, which is a very hard move to deal with. Pikachu's recovery is also amazing, making it hard to actually get Pikachu. Pikachu definitely has possibly the best edge guarding game in the entire game due to the multitude of options Pikachu has off stage. Pikachu's damage output is incredibly strong due to the fact that he has a very hard combo game, meaning that he is able to string together attacks fairly easy. And of course, Pikachu's kill power is insane. Now, he definitely does have strong kill options such as grab setups and out of his up tilt he's able to follow up with many aerials, meaning that killing with Pikachu isn't a problem. Now landing the kill move is the issue, and this gets into Pikachu's cons. Pikachu is a lightweight character, meaning that if Pikachu takes too much damage, it's not very hard to kill Pikachu. Pikachu's recovery might be the best, but it's actually hard to master. And you know what? I see like vet Pikachu still self-destruct as Pikachu. It's not necessarily that easy due to the fact that it has so many angles and the timing is pretty strict if you want to get out the second quick attack. Now, I said Pikachu does have great kill power, but killing with Pikachu is still such a commitment because even if I try to go in and get the kill, it seems like Pikachu's smash attacks are still pretty telegraphed, so it's not hard for good players to actually shield Pikachu's smash attacks and punish them for even attempting to kill them. Now, Throughout Smash titles, Pikachu has always suffered from having a lack of range. Now while Pikachu has an insane amount of multi-hit moves, and Pikachu does not have a lot of cooldown on any of his aerials, if any at all, Pikachu's range kinda gimps him because it's actually hard to catch your opponent with the move without being right in their face. Now, a cool thing about this is even though he does lack range, due to the fact that he almost has no cooldown on any of his aerials, he can instantly fade in and out, depending on the situation, whether or not he wants to continue a string, or he misses and needs to fade back to be safe. Now, Pikachu also loses to disjointed moves. So, in Brawl, Marth was able to outrange Pikachu, and that's a problem. A character that gets outranged that lacks range, that's a bad, that, you know, that's a hard matchup. But all of Pikachu's cons definitely make up for these things, and Pikachu is not a pick up and play character in my opinion. Pikachu is a character that you do need to lab with and put in a lot of time to play efficiently. Jabs, dash attacks, and tilts. Now, Pikachu's jab isn't necessarily the strongest jab, but it's very fast. It doesn't have a lot of knockback as well. However, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Now, if I were to F throw Okami and he didn't tech and I run up and jab him, you can see that he, I, he gets locked into a jab reset. Now, this can catch opponents off guard, especially those who are sloppy with their game because a kill percent, this is dangerous. Or just doing this across the stage, that's a lot of unnecessary percent that could have been avoided had they teched the move. Now, it does have hardly any knockback, but let's say Okami jumps over the ledge and doesn't sweet spot it. So if he were to jump straight up and he gets hit by that, I can knock him out of his second jump. And that allows me to go off stage and try to gimp him. Now, if Okami were to try to grab me or try to dash grab me, I could break it with a jab because in this game, jabs beat smash attacks. Of course, this needs to be well-timed or you will end up getting hurt. Now we have Pikachu's dash attack. Pikachu's dash attack is extremely strong in this game. However, it is a risky move to use due to the end lag on the move. It does do a considerable amount of damage. As you can see, it gave Mega Man 10%. But what of killing? Now, the move is an extremely powerful kill move. However, it should only be used for punishment.
As you can see, that almost killed Okami. And just off of a dash attack as well. He crossed up my shield with his dash attack and it put him in a lot of lag. So instead of grabbing him, I opted to just dash attack him because I knew, hey, he's at 143%. This could possibly kill now. Why not just dash attack for free? And that is when dash attack should be used. It should not be used as an approach because it's easy to shield. And then I get punished. Moving on to tilts. Pikachu's down tilt is a great spacing tool that is able to trip his opponents. The trip rate is different on certain characters, so be very mindful of that when opting to down tilt in an attempt to trip your opponent. Now, not only is it good for spacing, but it's good for following up as well. So if I down tilt, I can possibly get a grab right after. Especially if my opponent trips. Now, you can down tilt, and if they shield it, they might drop their shield, and you can just F smash them. Or vice versa. So you can down tilt into grab, down tilt F smash, down tilt up smash, down tilt down smash, because the cooldown on down tilt is not very high at all. You can see it, I can just keep repeatedly using it over and over and over, and your opponent is forced to shield it, because if they don't, they're going to end up getting hit by it, and they can't shield the move forever, let alone punish it unless they come from above. F tilt. F-Tilt is uncommon for Pikachu players to actually use. You can of course angle the forward variation upward, forward, and downward. Now, it's good for poking people, I feel, and it's good as an attempt to punish somebody out of shield, so if Mega Man were to swoosh right into my shield, I can just punish him with a uh, F tilt. However, I feel like grabs are much better in that situation, so this move isn't necessarily useless or bad, it's just an uncommon option. Up tilt. Now you guys know how I feel about up tilt. But leading up into Pikachu's aerials and even leading into himself, up tilt is a very, very, very potent move on stage and especially out of shield. So if Mega Man were to try to swoosh my shield, I can punish him out of shield with up tilt, which leads right into my combos. And that could be a dead Mega Man right off the bat. Now, it's very fast, and not only does it hit from behind Pikachu, it hits from in front of him as well. So the move covers a wide range above Pikachu's head, behind Pikachu, and in front of him. The move is just amazing in itself. It's great for punishment, out of shield as I've shown, and it is a combo starter. Combos. Combos with Pikachu are very, very, very apparent in his game. Of course, Pikachu does have a multitude of combos that a lot of characters just don't possess. Not only outside of his grabs, but within his actual tilt game as well. So for instance, we're going to try up tilt into fair. Now, fair can link into itself three times. Of course, this is DI dependent. All of these combos are DI dependent, but the thing is, Pikachu always has another option ready to cover whichever way you DI. So it's not like Pikachu just has two two combos and then he can't do anything else depending on how you di no if you choose to di to the left pikachu has an option for that you want to go straight up pikachu has an option for that pikachu has an option to cover almost every way you di now at low percents like this pikachu can up tilt string his opponents now why is this so good well your opponent starts to get juggled by the up tilt because they pop up off the ground which leads to up tilt into almost any aerial that Pikachu has. Now, not only are Pikachu's tilt strong when it comes to comboing, however, his throws are just as strong, if not stronger. Up throw links into up airs, which link into themselves and then into back airs. Up air into forward air. Even down throw has great properties in terms of comboing. So you can down throw into Nair, that was quite famous in Brawl, with Brawl Pikachu. Down throw into Fair. Down throw was kind of the combo setup move for Pikachu and Brawl, and it still remains in Smash 4. Now, let's put together a montage of just combos, depending on how my opponent DIs. Let's see what I can make out of this.
All right, and now I'm going to demonstrate all of Pikachu's quick attack angles. So what is quick attack? Quick attack is Pikachu's recovery move. Quick attack essentially is two, it has two parts and you can angle them in any way you desire, almost any way. You can't go forward, forward two times. You always have to angle it a different way or, or go backwards. This move is extremely potent as a recovery move, of course. However, what of on stage? It can be used offensively to, I'd say, pop your opponent up to continue strings or to get in on your opponent, especially characters that do like to run away or are very projectile based. Now, due to the fact that you can close the gap with quick attack, let's see what angles you can use quick attack. Alright, done. So let's talk about quick attack cancelling on the legend platforms. So, after a quick attack of course, most of the time you notice that Pikachu is in a slight bit of lag. However, when using platforms and the ledge to your advantage, it's a little bit different. So Pikachu can quick attack cancel onto the ledge of course. Let's see what that looks like. Now, did you see what I saw? Pikachu literally quick attacked to the ledge and slid off. This is a great mix up in terms of going for edge guards versus your opponent because not only does the move transport you fast off the ledge, but it puts you not in free fall, which allows you to do any option that you want outside of it. Now, you don't only have to quick attack cancel off of the ledge, you can quick attack cancel off of platforms as well. So this adds in a multitude of movement across the stage for Pikachu specifically because Pikachu is the only character in the game that has a move such as Quick Attack that has properties like this and speed such as this as well. So you don't only need to dash around your opponent to move throughout the stage, you can use Quick Attack as well to move normally or to go across platforms. This is Pikachu's up B. Now, it has many angles, which also pop up your opponent. So if Okami was at a high enough percent, let's say 57 right here, or 61, and I just up B him, it pops him up. And then I can possibly hit him with another aerial right outside of it. Now, we know what it can do on stage. What about off? Well, it allows Pikachu to recover from many different angles and depths of the stage. Of course, it is wise to jump with quick attack, therefore you'll have maximum reach. Now, you see, even from straight down at this blast zone, I'm able to come back this far away. I can make it back. Pikachu possibly has the best recovery in the game. The possibilities and endless opportunities with this move are what make quick attack one of the best moves in Smash history, in my opinion. Now, let's talk about side B. Side B can be used to recover to the stage. As you can see, I'm able to snap the ledge when I use side B towards the ledge. And the move can be charged as well. 
on stage, it's not a good move though because it can be easily shielded and you'll get punished for it. So offensively, it's not a move that you want to actually use. Now, off stage, side B of course can be used to snap the ledge and it can be used to make a mix up happen due to the fact you might be using too much up B. But it can also aid Pikachu in traveling right under the stage to the ledge. So yes, Pikachu can go under the stage guys, but you know, planking's not in the game anymore, so don't get any ideas. So off the bat, we have Pikachu's famous move, you know it from Pokemon, Thunder Jolt. Now, Thunder Jolt can be used in a multitude of ways. First off, as a tool to help with approaching. So if I were to shoot a Thunder Jolt at Mega Man, he has two options, to get hit by it or shield it. Now, I lied, because he has three options. He can jump over it. So, let's check this out. If he shields it and I chase it, he's gonna try to shield it so he doesn't take damage. Therefore, shield loses to grab. I'm able to grab him and set up for combos because he decided to shield my Thunder Jolt. And the thing is, Pikachu can just actively chase behind it. It's such a good way to approach your opponents. Pikachus do tend to camp with Thunder Jolts and you can send more than one off the stage at the same time. And it's nice to have an active hitbox traveling throughout the entire stage that you're able to react with and work with. Now, if he chooses to jump over the Thunder Jolt, I can approach with an aerial to punish him for jumping. And if he chooses to spot dodge it, I can punish him for grab again by baiting out the spot dodge. So Thunder Jolt is very good to always have out on the stage as Pikachu because a character with a lack of range, this move literally makes up for it, allowing you to punish your opponent for trying to defend himself against your active hitbox traveling across the stage. That can't hurt you because you're not Pikachu. Now, in terms of edge guarding, Thunder Jolt is good in two ways. It can edge guard diagonally, meaning a character like Little Mac, if he tries to jump up, it can clip his jump just by hitting him from this angle. But however, you see how the move travels throughout this entire stage. A character like Mega Man that has to up be straight up would be in a lot of trouble if the move kept nicking him just like that. And now if you clip a character's second jump, there's no way they're coming back from that because, let's face it, they're not going to be able to recover, especially if you keep sending out Thunder Jolts throughout the stage. And of course, BE REVERSAL, this guy would say. Pikachu can be reversal, his Thunder Jolt, so it's a good way to fake out your opponent. Oh, I'm running away, you're chasing me? Be reversal. You can do a grounded one as well. And that is Thunder Jolt in a nutshell. Moving on, we have Pikachu's down B, bringing the thunder, literally. Now, Pikachu's thunder is a lot different in this game. In Brawl, you were able to actually kill off the top of the screen with Pikachu's thunder if they were at a high enough percent. People actively tried to air dodge this move in Brawl because let's face it, you don't want to die from that. Now, they kind of tweaked it a bit in this game. So, in terms of Thunder Cloud, if your opponent hits a certain area of the Black Cloud, so let's say the Black Cloud in general, they are spiked by the thunder, which brings them down to you to get hit by the large hitbox of thunder. Now, this is a great kill move, and you can even jump and hit your opponent with it as well. Now, the thing is, your opponent can DI out of this to the left or right, but some people don't do that because you're mixing them up in terms of what grabs you're using. So they're prepared to DI left or right because they think you're gonna up throw them for the kill, you down throw them instead. And now they don't know what to prepare for because of course, you can just back throw or forward throw. Mixing up your throws is important, but at kill percent, you wanna try to get that thundercloud kill. Now, I'm gonna show you a trick that I actually saw Shimitake do in tournament once. His opponent DI'd to the left, but it was only by a teeny bit. And if he stayed stationary with the down B, he wouldn't have caught him. So if my opponent DI's to the left a teeny bit, I'm able to tiptoe and walk over a little bit to Thundercloud spike him. It's very hard to actually pull off, but it does work. Bringing down the house. Now, you can use this offstage as a recovery option. However, make sure you're jumping straight up, not moving so that the thunder hits you, allowing Pikachu to not fall freely. Because if I were to do this, 
I have a lot of lag and I will not be able to recover back to the stage and that's going to be a stop. So you have to be safe and know the spacing of the thundercloud because this thing is amazing for edge guarding. I'm going to try it on Mega Man. You see how it pulls him right in and he gets stage spiked? Well, the thundercloud can also literally miss my body and bring him all the way down to the low black zone to die. So Thundercloud, AKA Pikachu's down B, is amazing in this game on stage and off stage due to the fact that it can net kills as early as 20% if you're edge guarding your opponent and on stage it can kill your opponent at as low as 100% depending on the character's weight and where they are on the stage. Another neat trick with Thunder is if you want to hit somebody solely with the lightning, you can do this. Jump backwards back onto the stage, but activate your up down B within your first jump while you're off stage. Therefore, the little piece of lightning strikes. Pikachu's aerials. Yeah, fair. Fair is one of Pikachu's main approach options. Fair is a multi-hit move that can link into itself three times. Now, it is also great for punishing aerials on your shield. So if Okami were to try to punish my shield, well, blah, blah. so if Kami were to try to hit my shield, I can possibly punish him with a fair out of shield. Now, it does have considerable knockback. So if I throw him up, it'll send him out far. And of course, the higher percent it has, the further that the opponent is going to go. And it's lagless, as you can see. So there isn't much commitment to using it while you're in the air. But if you do it too close to landing to the ground, of course you will have some lag. Now, due to it being a multi-hit move in this game, some multi-hit moves actually have the ability to spike their opponent. So for instance, I'm going to go off stage. I'm going to jump up and let's see if the last hit of Okami's fair will end up spiking me. Back air. Back air is an extremely potent multi-hit move that has the ability to ruthlessly attack your opponent and put them in terrible positions, especially off stage. So for example, if I were to be edge guarding Okami and he jumps back to the stage, I can stage spike him with that move. Now in some cases, I can actually spike or drag my opponent down to the bottom of the stage with back air. Back air does come out outside of Pikachu's up tilt, so it is great for combos and within combos. So if I were to back air Captain Falcon and he shields it, watch what happens. You saw that? He wasn't able to actually grab me. Now let's try it again. I can punish him for trying to grab me. The thing is with back air and some of Pikachu's other moves, it shrinks his hurt boxes, meaning that he's not able uh, he's not able to actually get hit or get grabbed. This is something that annoys a lot of people that have to fight Pikachu because it makes them miss punish attempts. Now if Captain Falcon were to jab me once on my shield, I can come out of my shield with an out of shield back air to punish him. Back airing out of shield is very, very, very good as Pikachu and not enough Pikachu players do it in my opinion. So as you can see, back air is a great move for not only stage spiking your opponent, but just not keeping them away from the ledge in general. Back air is also great on stage for out of shield play and for allowing your opponent to whiff grabs and attacks due to a shrinking Pikachu's hurt boxes. Back air is just an all around strong move and I really advise you to use this move. Let's talk about Nair a little bit. Nair is a move that is, can be used as an approach but isn't a popular approach due to Fair being so good as well as Dare. Now Nair can be used out of shield so let's say Falcon tries to F smash my shield. I can run out and punish him with a Nair or if he tries to up tilt my shield. I can Nair out of shield to punish him. So I really see Nair more so as not only something you can mix into your combos, but as something that you can use to punish your opponents out of shield and off stage. As you can see, I was able to edge guard Captain Falcon with Nair. But the cool thing is, not only Nair would have edge guarded him in that position, 
back air would have done the trick as well, and even a dare. This goes to show that Pikachu has a multitude of options off stage when it comes to edge guarding his opponents. Now, if you want to talk about more approach options, you do have fair, you have nair, you also have down air, as well as quick attack. But down air is a little different. Down air, of course, has two hits. Now, you see what happened there. You guys saw me doing it laglessly for the most part, but right there, that wasn't lagless. And when Pikachu hits the ground, it has a second hit. This second hit can knock your opponent away and has great impact, and most people fall for that as well. Now, if you want to use it as an approach, you want to use it laglessly because you're able to do mix-ups right out of it. So I don't only have to do F-Smash. So if he's ready to shield that, he'll drop his shield thinking, oh, Pikachu's going to be in lag, I'm safe. No, F-Smash to the face. Or if he predicts that I'm going to do it laglessly and decides to keep on shielding, I can just grab him. Now, of course, you can mix in all of these moves together as approach options, so be sure that you keep in mind what tools you have and when to use them. Offstage, Dare also has the ability to gimp opponents as well. Fast fall Dare into opponent, but I'm Pikachu, I'm making it back, it doesn't matter how far I fall down. Now, Up Air. Up Air is not a move that you can approach with, because if you try to, and you fast fall into the ground with it, you'll have lag after. And it's just not as good as his other options. Up, to, up tilt is really a move to use when you're trying to juggle your opponent in the air. And it's good for that, because it hits into itself. Look at that. Off stage, you can use it while trying to get back to the ledge. Jump up tilt to cover yourself. If your opponent's above you trying to spike you or gimp you, it'll be back to the ledge and you're safe. These are Pikachu's aerial tools. So let's talk about smash attacks. You know them, you love them, you need them if you want to win. So in terms of Pikachu, Pikachu smash attacks are crazy. Let's just, let's get this off. Now Pikachu has a plethora of options to kill in the game. You have down B, you have edge guarding, you have all this neat stuff. But wouldn't a character this good need its smash attacks downscaled? I guess not. Because Pikachu has no problem actually killing their, killing his opponent because his smash attacks are insanely strong as well. We're gonna take Up Smash for instance. Up Smash is a bit different. Not the fact that it's just some unique smash attack that Pikachu has. It just kills insanely early. So we're gonna, we have Fox at 106 now. So let's see if a Up Smash kills him. And of course that is gonna finish his stock. Now keep in mind, that was with no rage. Think of how early smash attack can kill with rage. So, the kind of risky thing about this is, while Pikachu has no problem killing, Pikachu has a problem getting the kill moves because of commitment. It doesn't take Fox much to just sit there and shield my up smash attempt and then punish me for it. So, you gotta be careful and you gotta go for reads. Now, if you want a safer way to link up smash into something, take my advice and fast fall fair into your opponent into up smash. At higher percents, it pops them up just enough so they can't shield it, and then they die from up smash. Now, let's talk about down smash. Down smash is arguably better in this game due to the fact that SDI is no longer as apparent as it was in previous titles, making it so that your opponent can't mash their way out of the multi-hit move. This move does have the ability to send your opponent off the stage far, which allows Pikachu to get straight into his edge guarding game. Now you have F Smash. F Smash is a beast all in itself. When spaced like that, it won't kill as well. However, when spaced the right way, at the tip, F Smash will destroy Pikachu's opponents, literally. Now, F Smash also has less lag than it did in Brawl, meaning that you can act almost right after the F Smash ends. So if Fox shields my F Smash and then tries to come in, I can down tilt them. But of course, don't get too happy with down tilt because you can grab as well. And those are Pikachu smash attacks, guys. Very deadly. However, if shielded or telegraphed or predicted, you can get in a lot of trouble for trying to force the kill with them. So be careful. You have a lot of other options that you can use. Now, that's gonna be it for the guide, guys. 
but let's talk a little bit more about Pikachu in terms of where I think Pikachu might be in this meta at the moment. Pikachu is a not so easy character to play, let alone master. So therefore, there aren't a lot of Pikachu players, at least at a high level yet. Now, Pikachu is a very popular character. I would say the fan favorite in certain circumstances because let's face it, the iconic little rat is very nostalgic to us because we all used to watch Pokemon, at least hopefully all used to watch Pokemon when we were children and still love Pokemon. We kind of hold them dear to our hearts. Now Pikachu in this game I feel like is definitely a top 10 character, no debate about it. Top 5? Very possible. Top 8? I'd say definitely. So Pikachu is very good in this game guys and I really hope you do decide to play him because I definitely added Pikachu on board with my Ness and Fox so I can aim to take more tournaments and improve my game. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you learned a lot about Pikachu throughout this guide. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel as well as follow me and Okami on Twitter. I will provide that right after this. Thank you guys again for watching. Peace out.